Hey everybody, I've got such a fun video for you today because I've got a great opportunity to compare two Broncos to find out should you buy a Bronco with the Sasquatch package or the all new Bronco Raptor. And this is a great comparison because there's quite a price delta between these two models. This is our long-term Cyber Orange Bronco with the Sasquatch package as you see it equipped about $63,000. Now this is the all new Bronco Raptor in Everglades green, and this one has equipped about $80,000. So we're talking like a $17,000 price gap between the two. And is the Ford Bronco Raptor worth that much more over a more standard, <laughs> quote, standard Bronco? Now let's start out with the obvious differences. The design. When Ford designed the Bronco Raptor, they really went to 11 with some of the styling cues. It isn't simply just a standard Bronco with these crazy wide flares. They actually did a ton to separate the Raptor from any other Bronco. Now let's start out with the grill. If you look at this first edition Bronco in Cyber Orange, you'll notice across the middle of the grill is the Bronco script. And we have the iconic round Bronco headlights with this intrusion into the grill. Now this will change depending on your spec of Bronco, like a base model is gonna have a slightly different LED signature, but this is uh, probably one of the best looking front ends, front grills in the industry. It's a throwback to the first generation Bronco, uh, which launched in what, 1966, made its way all the way to 1977. Then of course, it went to the full size Bronco and then the OJ style Bronco, there was a Bronco 2 in the middle there. Bronco died in what, 95, and then they launched it again in uh, 2020. This is a 2021 Bronco and they nailed the look for the sixth generation Bronco. So Ford took that as, a, as kind of the starting point and then changed it around a little bit for the Raptor. So you'll notice that the Bronco script is no longer found in the center of the grill. Instead, you have what's called the F-O-R-D grill, F-O-R-D, the Ford grill. Now this is a Raptor product and the Raptor is a name first used on the F-150. I think it launched in what, 2009? Um, and then there was a second gen F-150 and then the third gen. And now they're taking that Raptor name and applying it to the Bronco. Abroad, there's also a Ranger Bronco that hasn't come to the States yet, but this is really the first time here in the US we're seeing the Raptor name on something that's not an F-150. And there's a couple of iconic signatures of the Raptor nameplate. So the F-O-R-D is certainly one of them, but another one, the marker lights built into the grill. This vehicle is so wide, 86.9 inches wide, that you legally have to have marker lights like you'd find on a dually or a large um, truck that, that needs that width. It's, it's a mandate. So they incorporated those ambers into the grill. They're also in the mirrors, which we'll talk about in a second. But they've actually taken it a step farther because if you look closely, these two lights appear to be pretty similar, but they're actually fairly different. So if you look at the daytime running light signature, I'll try to pop those on here. Might be hard to see in this bright sunlight, but you'll notice that on our first edition, uh, you get this illuminated white circle around the outside and then this white line through the inside. Whereas on the Raptor, they've gone a slightly different route, which does look phenomenal. So what they did on the Raptor is actually illuminate the outside of the headlight in orange with this bar through the middle, and it's even brighter when you're driving along, but it looks great. You're driving along and you see a Raptor Bronco behind you, you see those illuminated circles in orange, and you know you're dealing with something special, and there you can see the marker lights as well across the grill. Now that isn't the only difference in design between uh, the Sasquatch Bronco. Sasquatch means that this is a Bronco on 35s. It also means that you've got the locking diffs. Um, there's a lot of other differences. Primarily the fenders. So the track width on the Raptor is 8.6 inches wider than the uh, Bronco um, in standard configuration. The overall width, 9.8 inches wider. That's a huge number. That is an enormous difference. And you can't simply take your tires, stick them out that far, and call it a day with a narrow body design because then you have this big width of tire that's not being covered. It's not actually allowed here in the States, or for that matter, as far as I know, any other country because you've got road debris and rocks and rain getting sprayed up to stuff behind you. So you have to cover up the tire somehow. Now Ford has done that in a couple of different ways. First of all, the fenders are different. So you'll notice on the Cyber Orange Bronco here, we've got this little indent and then it basically flattens out. And then on top of that is this flare, which is held on with these little half turn um, moon dial finger screws. And the idea being you, uh, you, you grab one of these on a tree off road, take it off, stick a new one on, super easy, super fast. Now the actual fender material on the green Bronco here, the Raptor, this is what they call an SMC. Uh, it's a molded composite material. 
that's what they call it. Uh, if you read between the lines, it's essentially a form of plastic. So it's got plastic front and rear fenders, but they actually are much more aggressive than any other Bronco. So you'll notice they kind of plateau and then go, they make a strict, almost 90 degree angle, whereas you got the curve in the yellow one. And then on top of that, you got these enormous flares. They are huge. They stick out a good six, seven inches beyond the fender itself. And these are no longer held on with those little half turn dial finger screws. These are actually bolted to the, uh, the, the fender underneath. So very different design there. And I asked the engineers why they did that. They said for a Bronco Raptor use case, like high speed desert running is how I interpret that. These need to be a little bit stronger than what the half turns can offer. You'll also notice these gills along the side. This is passive air venting to get that heat out of of the engine bay and uh, expel it out the side. And that is important actually because they've done a lot of work in getting air both in and out of the Bronco Raptor. So if you take a look at that grill one more time case, this grill and the front end design offer something like 50% more inlet into the Bronco engine bay. And then uh, to get that air out, you've got the passive grills along the side, but you've got this large bulge on the hood. And this is where the vast majority of the heat is gonna escape. This is a vehicle intended to run in like Johnson Valley where they've got the uh, King of the Hammers race. And it gets hot, it's extreme. Uh, you gotta get that heat out of the engine. So that's what the Bronco Raptor has. Whereas the standard Bronco, you got a little bit of a bulge, but no venting out the top there. Now we'll make our way down to the sides. Uh, we'll talk about the tires while they're here. So I mentioned that this Sasquatch Bronco is the 35s. A uh, normal Bronco is going to be like a 32, a 33. But the 35s, when I first saw these, that was like, wow, they've really taken it to the nth degree. 31570 R17 in a Goodyear Territory MT tire. Uh, but of course, the Raptor has gone to 37. Same tire on the F-150 Raptor. So this is a 37 by 12 and a half. R17, it's an LT design. And it's actually, if you can see this right here case, it's got the three peak snow rating. So this is a tire designed to run in uh, all kinds of inclement weather. It's a KO2 BF Goodrich. Now, personally, I was very impressed with the performance of these Goodyear Territory MTs, but, and they are mud and snow rated, but no three peak rating. So it's not really designed to be a snow tire. As an overall use case for on-road, for ice driving, for snow, for slush, for rocks, for sand. You cannot beat a KO2. This is truly my favorite tire on the market. So not only is it taller, but I do like this tire a little bit more in terms of all that traction. Back up a little bit here. Bumpers, both of these do have the uh, metal front bumper design. Uh, and actually the bumper design itself is shared between the two, but the integration's a little different. So you'll notice on the Sasquatch Bronco, you got this hole here, uh, similar once again to that first gen Raptor. And if you've ever seen a first gen Raptor on the road, one of the most common aftermarket modifications are lights in this hole to fill up the space. Now remember, my dad actually asked the Ford engineers all the way back like 10 years ago, why leave the hole? And they said it was so you could see the Fox suspension on the Gen 1 Raptor. And then everybody immediately covered up that viewfinder with lights. So Ford decided, let's just do that from the factory on the Bronco Raptor. So we actually have these rigid lights. Now the outside ones act as a fog, the inside ones act as an actual off-road light, hence why they're covered. Uh, those are not allowed for road use, by the way, on DOT highways. And then underneath that, is this little bit of plastic. This is an arrow piece. I'd probably take that off if I were you. This whole area here can be removed, including this arrow bit for a better approach angle. So I would probably remove that. Now you can do something similar on this Bronco. Pull that out. Toe hooks, they do look um, virtually the same. Of course, different color palette with the silver versus the black. But I'm told that the tow hooks on the Raptor are upgraded over the standard Bronco. Kind of a fun piece of uh, trivia there. And while we're here, let's talk about the side of the vehicle, starting with the mirrors. Now the mirrors on first glance, you're like, oh, same mirror. Not the same mirror actually, because part of the deal of having that 86.9 inch width and having those marker lights, you don't only need them on the front, you need them on the side of the vehicle. So what they've done on the Raptor is, if you can see this, you've got an amber pointing forward and then a red pointing back. And that once again is uh, per regulation. Now the reason they did it here, I think it would have been cool if they had stuck them kind of up here on the roof, like some old school Cummins folks do. Shout out the case behind the camera. But uh, they didn't, they put it on the mirror because they couldn't put it on the door. The doors are removable on a Bronco. They couldn't put it on the roof because the roof is removable on a Bronco. So they stuck them on the mirrors. Whereas on the standard Bronco, you do have a light integrated here, but you don't have that amber and that red. 
coming along the side. Doors are shared between the two. Um, so that is one area where you do have some cost savings from a Ford standpoint. But the, the actual steps design is different. So you'll notice the Raptor has a Raptor branded side step here. And you're probably thinking, can this take the full weight of the vehicle? And the answer is really no. So this is not designed to be a slider. What the Ford engineers ended up incorporating are these six bolts. You got two here, two here, and two here. And I think they're torques, right? Yeah, they're torques. Uh, and with the toolkit, they give you a tool, pull those out, remove these steps. It's supposed to be quick and easy. And there's actually a mechanism in place where uh, um, they've designed these little pins so it doesn't go just flopping to the ground immediately. It's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be easy to remove. And then underneath that, you have a rock rail, which is designed to bear the full mass of the vehicle. Something similar to what you'll see here on our Sasquatch Bronco. The only difference is we don't have the removable step aspect. So that is one difference. Now coming along the rear, similar fender treatment design. These rear fenders, once again, they're more bulged out than our standard Bronco. And then you got these enormous hips out back. Now Case, uh, Case actually said something pretty funny and I'm gonna try to say it. I probably can't do it as well as he does, but he mentioned that, have you ever seen like someone with butt implants and then like their butt doesn't match like the, the width of their legs? It's kind of what this thing looks like especially from the rear three quarters. These are just, they're just too much. Now in like the Everglades green, it does a pretty good job of masking uh, the, the, the contrast between the fender flare and the actual body. But you see this thing in like a bright orange or like a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a white or something. And you really kind of get the sense that these are just stuck on. I'm not sure that they did this very well. I mean, I feel like they've already changed the rear fenders and it's a different material and they could have made this look like anything. Why didn't they just mold the actual body color out further and then do a small little flare versus having a, uh, a changed fender but this enormous flare, not entirely sure I understand that. Tail lights are different as well. So these are kind of these bulky, um, uh, squared off units here, which stick out beyond the body. Whereas on our first edition, it's more of a flush mounted design. And that is a regulation thing too. So if you're driving behind a Bronco, you have to be able to see the turn signals from any angle. And because the spare tire sticks out further on the Raptor, they had to actually incorporate the taillight design to stick out beyond the actual body so you could see it from any angle. And then speaking of that bigger tire, bigger tire means more weight, uh, means more clearance issues. We've got a different chimsel or center, my, uh, center mounted, center high mounted stoplight. I'll get that one on the first try next time, I promise. But you got a different chimsel design here. And then you also have this heavy duty tailgate hinge. If you're a Jeep guy, you'll know this is a common issue. Put a big tire on your tailgate. These hinges will start to sag over time. Uh, but with this design, they've incorporated so that this is actually going to take the weight and the load. Now, while we're back here, let's talk about some of the other differences. The rear bumper design, pretty similar, but the hitch is very different. Now, Case, check this out. So we've got our hitch here on our first edition Bronco. And if you can kind of point the camera underneath, it's going to be hard to kind of express. But the hitch assembly, we actually added this after afterhand. It's not too big of a job but it basically just mounts to the rear portion of the vehicle. And then you've got uh, your, your little four pin here. And with this configuration, the Bronco can tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds, which is pretty lacking, I do have to say. Uh, you know, 400 will tow 5,000. A Wrangler's also at like 3,500, which is also really pretty poor. But the thing about the Bronco is you'd expect it to tow more for the size and the capability and the power of the vehicle. So they've actually beefed that up here on the Bronco Raptor. Now look at this, check this out. This is kind of different. This is an additional brace, which extends to this cross member there on the frame. And this along with other bracing, which is closer to the exhaust, this gives you more towing capability. This is much more beefed up for a maximum of 4,500. And then also look at the way they've done the wiring. They said when they were testing this vehicle off-road, they found on the departure angle, they were actually ripping off the seven pin and the four pin connector. So they've given this, this is called the beaver tail. It's this metal extrusion that protects the wiring from damage when you're out on the rocks. Also the exhaust system. This is a good time to talk about the exhaust. So you get dual tips in the Raptor, but nothing behind the rear axle here. You, you see there's a total um, kind of void where these cross members are. Whereas if you compare that to the standard Bronco, this is where you'll find the muffler. See that right there? Now this vehicle has an entirely different exhaust system, um, Sasquatch to Bronco. So uh, the Bronco Raptor has a true dual system. So 
twin turbo V6. You got headers that go straight to dual pipes. Uh, the muffler unit is actually underneath, not in the back, with a cutout, and then true duals out the back. So that's how you get a lot more breathing capability with the Bronco Raptor over uh, the standard Bronco. And speaking of capability, let's talk about the engines because we're going to see some pretty, well, I don't want to say big differences, but I'd say significant differences in that department as well. Now, both of these vehicles come equipped with a twin turbo V6, part of the EcoBoost family, both actually related to each other, believe it or not. So this Bronco, the Sasquatch, as you see it equipped, um, has the 2.7 twin turbo V6. Not a very good looking engine to look at, to be honest. Now, horsepower rating, we're like in the 400 range, um, and it's a good engine. This is the engine out of the, uh, uh, the, the Lima engine plant, similar to what you'd find in like an F-150. And it also has a hood prop, which is one of the things I always like, wow, we're paying 62 grand for a Bronco and you're still gonna give me a hood prop. But um, that's what they decided to do with the standard Bronco. Now, believe it or not, the Raptor actually has gone to struts. Whoopee, check that out. So you spend more, you get struts. Now this is the, uh, also a, uh, an engine, I think out of the Lima plant. I don't, I don't wanna say that incorrectly, but this is a three liter twin turbo V6 and it makes more horsepower. So 400 and what? Man, I'm totally blanking. I think it's 418, 440. I think that's right. 418, 440, it's kind of tricky in these one takes to remember all your numbers. But yeah, uh, so it's more powerful than 2.7, but they're very similar in the architecture, very similar in the development process. Now, of course, this is a different tune. This also has different turbos. Because they can flow so much air, it's got very different turbos than what you'd find on uh, that yellow Bronco over there. And then underneath here, you can kind of see some of the more functionality with the hood openings and the way that is incorporated. Also, like the air boxes are very different. So. We've got this enormous gaping uh, intake on the Raptor, whereas if we go over here to the Sasquatch, it's kind of much smaller, a little bit more tame there. Um, but like, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two in terms of uh, the architecture from a, uh, an engine placement and an engine design standpoint, like the washer placements are similar, the battery placements are similar. A lot of it is shared, because you have to. But what isn't shared is the suspension design. So in case if you wanna kinda show underneath the front end of this yellow Bronco, uh, independent front suspension, right? Kinda see that down there. It's a very capable design with the stay bar disconnects, but look at the beefiness difference and some of the forged materials we have with the uh, control arms on the Raptor. It's just so much bigger and heavier duty than what you find even on that 35 inch equipped Bronco. And then if we come to the rear, let's take a look at the rear diff because it has a totally different rear diff. The standard Bronco has a Dana 44. Take a peek under there, get a sense of what that looks like. And then if we come over to the Raptor, Dana 50, and it's got a slightly different look to it. Uh, you can even see the Raptor R there on the, uh, on the, the rear diff case there. But the, the big deal is the axle tubes themselves are like twice as thick as the Dana 44 on the Bronco. Um, we also have jounce bumpers on the Raptor because this was designed to go get some air, get some landings done. And then the shock absorbers, gotta talk about the shocks. So these are active dampers on the Raptor. Um, 3.1 Foxes internal bypass. Uh, they switch on the fly. You can change the damp settings on the, uh, the dampening settings on the steering wheel. Very, very cool design. It also has beefed up control arm mount. It's got a beefier frame and totally different shock towers than this yellow Bronco. If you look at the shocks in here, uh, the other side's probably gonna be better, but it's a passive uh, damping system. There you go smart thinking so it's not quite as sophisticated it's not a live valve system like what you'd find on the bronco raptor all right case that was a lot of talking let's hop inside this yellow one talk about the interior then we'll hop inside the green one and then we'll take them both for a ride so 63 grand as equipped and i've <laughs> i spent the last couple of days in that uh <laughs> that Raptor Bronco and stepping in here, there's actually a noticeable number of differences. And the biggest right off the bat are gonna be the seats and the steering wheel. So these seats are comfortable. They're great seats. This is the Navy Pier kind of dark blue interior, but they're very, um, 
very kind of basic in the way they hold you, but comfortable. It's a nice kind of squishy material. Uh, and then the steering wheel has a lot less bolstering than what we'll see on that Raptor R, and also a lot less kind of configurable buttons. So keep this in your mind. When you look at the steering wheel on the standard um, Bronco, you got like uh, your tune selections, your cruise control, your adaptive stuff, your your instrument cluster systems, but that Raptor is going to have actually configurable suspension steering um, exhaust modes on the wheel, which is pretty different. And then look at the gauge cluster. So the gauge cluster in the standard Bronco, we have an analog speedometer, uh, kind of a throwback to the original Bronco from the 60s and 70s, where it was mounted on the left of the steering column. And then we've got a digital inside, and we can see all sorts of different gauges and uh, information mounted through there. And we've got like the my views, trip information, off-road, all of that's going to be found in there. Uh, now, if we pan to the middle, this is where things are going to get similar. Very similar screen design from Bronco to the Raptor over there. Similar HVAC controls, although this 2021 actually has a little temperature displayed in the dials, which you won't find in the... Uh, Raptor, and then drive modes, the GOAT modes down here. Also different design on the way they've incorporated the GOAT mode. So we've got normal, eco, slippery, mud ruts, sand, Baja, and then a rock crawl over there. And we'll see that on the Raptor, there's actually a slightly different mode, which is pretty cool, but a very functional interior. Hero switches up top, stay bar disconnect, we've got our locker switches, we've got our turn assist, that's all gonna be similar. And then we also have aux controls on the roof which, believe it or not, is similar to the Bronco Raptor, which I think we should go check out now. That's the one that people are going to care about. Now, what I do like is that Ford has touched the interior and has changed stuff around on the interior. And when you hop in, the very first thing you notice is the bolstering on the seats is way more aggressive on the Raptor compared to the standard Bronco. So these do definitely hug you more. If you are a larger individual, they might hug you too much. You kind of want to go sit in one. It's not nearly bad, as bad as like the Recaros and some of the older Raptors, which were just like designed for people that were five, six and 90 pounds. So this is better, but look at all the changes on the inside, starting with the steering wheel. Not only do we have that Raptor iconic centering mark, but the thickness of the wheel throughout is enormous. I mean, this is a very, meaty steering wheel and we got the full complement of paddle shifters out back here too so we've got magnesium paddles uh of course uh downshift on the left upshift on the right feels great and then this one has the optional carbon package like 17 1800 bucks not worth it in my opinion but we've got carbon fiber on the steering wheel and then check this out we've got different exhaust modes for those cutouts all done on the steering wheel we've got different dampening all done on the steering wheel we've got steering controls and even a shortcut like a bmw m shortcuts called the r button to go into my mode right there on the steering wheel and speaking of uh the configuration look at the gauges case full digital gauges uh Man, I've really made it upset. There we go. So uh, we no longer have the analog tack. We've got full digital. This system looks way better. So this is my biggest favorite improvement, uh, Raptor to standard, is these gauges are really, really clear, really, really crisp. And check this out too. There's even a performance view. So if I click this, you kind of get a sense of what that looks like. That's going to center the tack. It's going to give me my vital information and uh, my gear position all there on the center. So apart from that though, we have a different goat mode. If you want to show in the middle here, Case, see what that looks like. Um, first of all, you get the better animation, but then you also get a nice like tow haul mode, which you don't get in the, uh, in the standard Bronco, which is pretty cool. Uh, this one has Raptor cross interior. It's here in the center. It's back here in the seats. These are the marine grade vinyl seats. And this is my favorite interior configuration on the Bronco because they're durable, they're easy to clean, and they feel very nice. And if you look at your feet too, this one also has the full vinyl floor which is a great thing when you're off-road. Also, they went as far as to change the floor mats. This is Raptor floor mats. And then they've kind of put orange in places that do things. So like the vents have these little orange uh, accents. The door pockets down here, right? They've got these little orange netting. So things that move, like the goat modes, things that are configurable are now in orange, which is kind of fun. All right, that was a mouthful. I think we go hop in that yellow Bronco and go take it for a spin. We'll do a little bit of, um, high speed blasting through the field, and then we'll get it on the road. Uh, if you wanna see my full impressions on the uh, Bronco Raptor, be sure to stay tuned to TFL Off-Road where those are gonna um, be found. Uh, Off-Road and rock crawling and desert running, I went crazy with this thing. And then we're gonna have a full off-road comparison between the Sasquatch and this one as well. Um, so let's go ahead and hop in the Sasquatch, see what that's like. 
Which uh, color do you like more? Let me know in the comments below. I like them both. This is cyber orange. It's not orange. I'm just saying it now. It's yellow. You can fight me if you want. But I will not budge on that viewpoint. So, uh, yeah, let's kind of go bomb up this field and see how this uh, suspension works. Now, of course, passive dampers, as we talked about. Uh, Four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive low, four-wheel drive auto. And immediately, this is a severely rutted out field because it's got all these gopher holes in it. We're, of course, today at Tumbleweed Ranch, which is our uh, new off-road testing course. But that's like 20 miles an hour across this field. And that's kind of as comfortable as you'd want to go over a long distance over there. So you could push it faster. There's 27, there's 32, right? So you can definitely get some speed going, get a little drift here, and it will do it. You know, and it certainly is a lot of fun, but it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit firm. Um, and I'm not sure that I would want to go bomb across a desert in this thing for eight, nine hours at those kind of speeds. But uh, as we kind of approach the main road, some things to talk about. These have wonderful and comfortable seats for a road trip. I've taken this thing um, on an 800 mile road trip and it really performed very admirably. It was a wonderful thing, even for um, hundreds of miles at a time. The audio system is not incredible, but uh, you know, it's, it certainly is, is usable even the B&O, because you don't have the speakers above your head. But yeah, I really am, am impressed with the driving dynamics of this. And it it's, uh, definitely feels big if you're like used to Wranglers and that kind of world, but it's pretty manageable, gets more speed across its desert. Now, not a lot of engine tone coming through, right? Off this desert, this is just a, it's just a field. I'm used to desert running now after my trip. Um, ooh, big ass rock there, pretty direct steering and decent acceleration. It does kind of boogie along pretty darn well, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it fast, right? It's uh, or quick, I should say, in acceleration. It's not super quick. It's very adequate, and it's a very quiet experience. So even when you're completely floored on the throttle, it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. Now let's go ahead and jump in that Green Raptor, and we'll kind of compare what it's like, because I think that's where we're going to start to see a pretty big void between the experience of the Bronco and the experience of the Bronco Raptor. Because that vehicle was intended for rock crawling, of course, but this is where it shines, over a rough uh, field, over rough roads, over um, big stretches of desert for an extended period of time. Now, I can't wait to see what that's like, so Case, we'll just hop on out, and we will give that one a go. There's David over there. He's uh, doing some graveling of the roads, which is quite nice. Never a slow day at the ranch for Mr. David Morrow. So these orange seatbelts look great, but it's another $300, $400 option on the Bronco. And if this thing starts at 70, um, I'm not really sure you really need to spend 400 bucks on the, uh, on the seatbelt. So um, here, I'm gonna engage the uh, loud setting on the exhaust. We'll kind of get a sense of what that's like. And I think immediately you're gonna hear a difference. You can also, by the way, turn ABS off on a Bronco Raptor. One of the few vehicles you can, which is kind of a fun thing if you are in the desert running. So immediately, we're up to the same speed that we were up to in the Bronco. There's 20 actually faster. That was almost 30 through there. Kind of rip it through the field here, get it nice and sideways. Ooh, look at that. And then hard on the throttle. There's 40, there's 50. And then better brakes too, because this has the uh, F-150 Raptor brakes. So you stomp on those anchors and off you go. And a lot more noise, do you hear that? Now the acceleration sensation, don't wanna scare the cows here. The acceleration sensation is not that different between a, a Bronco and a Bronco Raptor. Sure, you get more horsepower and torque in the Raptor, but you're also getting more weight. This thing is well over 5,000 pounds. It's an absolute beast in terms of its curb weight. So. That is certainly something that you need to factor when you're considering acceleration. So what, over 400 horsepower, 440 torques, but 
it's not a rocket ship um, as you might expect out of a Raptor, but that's not really what it's designed to be. It's designed to be a piece de resistance in terms of its suspension. And when you have this additional width, right, 8.6 inches of additional track width, you feel a lot more comfortable approaching turns and approaching those big slides because you feel like, okay, it's probably going to be a lot more stable in the turns. And indeed it is. You can really rip it around. There is that sound. One other thing about that sound, by the way, that sounds a lot to me like the old 350, 370Z. Especially in the higher RPMs, it does have kind of this V6 whale, which is, um, well, it's something you either love or you really don't like. Would I like the burble of a V8? Yes, is the answer. Now, one other thing I want to point out, let's kind of bring the speed down a little bit. Take a look at the hood case. What's one thing you don't notice? The one thing you don't notice is the width. So driving this, the view out the front looks like a standard Bronco until you're through a drive through and you clip a pole because you forget you have 10 additional inches that you can't see out the front. The fender flares stick out so far beyond the body, you don't notice them unless you're looking for them in your rear mirror, that it's so easy to forget vehicle placement. And in Colorado on our off-road trails, this thing is really going to struggle to fit in places where that yellow one would just go bloop because it is that much wider. So I have a prediction that, especially in the first few months, there's going to be a lot of Bronco uh, Raptor owners replacing fender flares and doing alignments because taking this thing, I took this thing through a uh, in and out drive through in California and I was like, do, 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 feel like a standard Bronco, you're forgetting a Raptor. And then you look back and you're like, I almost clipped that pole within like a centimeter. So something to keep in mind. All right, let's close it out. Let's see if the Raptor's worth it. Now, this is an amazing piece of technology. The Raptor with the improved suspension primarily is more capable at speed off-road than just about anything in the world at this point. It is that amazing when you really get, in, get it into its element. But the thing is, is for someone like me in Colorado, for someone that doesn't live near a desert or a place to really unleash it, finding an opportunity to use this to its full potential is very, very difficult. Now on the road, people do think, wow, that guy, that guy's got the coolest Bronco out there. And that's true. And that is worth a lot of money to a lot of folks. But let's be honest, this Bronco on 35s still has front and rear lockers. It still is a freaking tall tire, but it's more usable in places like Colorado, where when you start going into the mountains, you get nothing but tree after tree after tree, and you really need to be cognizant of the width of your vehicle. So for me, I think that you're better off getting this Bronco. It's not as cool. It doesn't have that crazy stance, but I personally like the design of this more. I like the Bronco across the grill, and I like the fender to um, fender flare profile a little bit more. It just looks a little bit more cohesive than the Bronco Raptor, which is insane, but in my mind, not quite as elegant, not quite as beautiful. Now, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Which one would you take? Is the Raptor worth $10,000, $20,000 more? And as always, we'll see you on the next video.